Praise God. Lord Jesus, we come before you now and hallow your name according to your word. And just thank you for blessing us with your spirit, God. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the blood that you shed. God, thank you for Passover. Thank you for oh, yes. Pentecost. Help Hallelujah, us, Jesus. Help us see things in your word that will guide us from day to day. In Jesus' name. Yes, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 We have been studying in the book of Revelation, and we're in chapter 22, and we have a few more verses to go. But this past week, Ada had asked me to go over again um, and give a reason why I believe that the tree of knowledge of good and evil that is mentioned here in chapter 2 of Genesis would be Satan, the, the devil, okay? And so uh, before we go on in Revelation 22, uh, I want to talk about uh, why it is. And I, I'll say this, there are th things in the Bible that I would... Uh, you can't really form a doctrine and we rarely rarely talk about things like um the the tree of knowledge of good and evil being satan or connected to him except for that we were talking about the tree of life earlier in um revelation 22 we were talking about the water of life the tree of life and that god is the light all those things are mentioned in the first five verses of Revelation 22. And so when we were talking and going over Genesis, that's the only time that you're going to see the uh, tree of knowledge of good and evil mentioned is in Genesis 2 and Genesis 3. And so... Uh, when I say we don't normally talk about, they're gray, what I call gray areas. Mm -hmm. It's not really black and white to say, okay, this is the devil, or the tree of life is Jesus, even though, you know, I can see it. And if you can't see it, uh, I'm not going to fuss. It, it, right. I'm not, it's not a big deal. It's not a salvational issue. Uh, we can see that, that God can... Uh, make himself visible in a lot of different ways right. and we covered that a couple weeks ago so as we begin tonight I'm, I want to look <coughs> in Genesis chapter 2 and specifically at verse 9 we'll start there it says and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So you have in that one verse, you have all the trees to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. Also, it says the tree of life also in the midst and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then if you look down a little bit farther in um well, look at verse 15. It says, The Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden. I, I see the Garden of Eden. And, and look back up in verse 8. I read you verse 9, but it says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. That's where Adam and Eve had started is in what we call the Garden of Eden. And in that garden, in verse 15, it says, The Lord God took the man and put him in to the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. In verse 16, it says, The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Then in verse 17, he said, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, 
For in the day thou that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And so we see in that passage, there's a commandment. And that he was not, thou shalt not, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. That's a commandment. And there was a penalty that went with it. He says, for the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. There's a penalty of death that go with um, that sin. And, and I want you to know, it, it is sin. The wages of sin is death. And so, and then if you look over here in chapter 3, in the very first part, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. I want you to realize this. I do believe that there was a tree. Now, you know that there's trees everywhere, right? In the garden, there was a lot of different trees, and they could eat of those trees. But specifically, they were not to take of that tree of knowledge of good and evil. And I do think that there was some form of fruit on that tree because we see, as we read in Genesis 3, that uh, they ate. They actually partook of eating that fruit. And uh, I'll read you verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. When we covered this passage here a couple weeks ago, uh, I went to Revelation 12, and I think if you look at uh, there, you're going to see that the devil is described as, uh, well, it describes him as a dragon in verse 3, and in verse 4, his tail drew a third part of the stars and, and did cast them to the earth. So you see him there as a dragon. But if you look down at verse 9, this is Revelation 12 and verse 9. It says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So Satan has more than one name. When we go to Isaiah 14, he's called Lucifer son of the morning okay um so he has a lot of different names that he goes by but i said that so that you would see when it, you look at genesis 3 1 and it says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast that's really talking about satan this is talking about in verse 9 here we're talking about in the very beginning right of time yes well, okay, oh. now let, let me be specific here. Uh, in, when he was kicked out of heaven. He, yes, yes, he was, because in the gospel, Jesus specifically said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Mm -hmm. And so there was a fall back. He had fallen. When we're reading this here in Genesis 2, and three, the fall has already occurred. Okay. Because now he's he in had a, already, He was actually there maybe even before Adam and Eve. I do think so. Now, see, this is another thing where um, it's, it, there's not enough information to build the doctrine. Right. But when you look at Genesis 1 and 1... It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You know, everything that God does is good. But when you look at verse 2, and it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the, of the waters. And then in verse 3, God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So, most people think, well, that all happened just simultaneous. No, no. I, I don't think so. I think that when Satan fell, he called that, he caused the darkness. Um, something happened that created, uh, oh, well, 
life to cease on the earth because of the devastation. And then there is a recreation, a recreation when you get to verse three. Oh, actually in the middle of verse one. Well, thank you, okay? She said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, okay? He had to create these things and the angels also, mm -hmm. right? But we don't specifically see when they were created. And then you know that they, there is a fall because you see that they have been cast out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you we're more reading Revelation 12, and we talk about a, a fight in verse 7. Rev, um, okay, we're getting off here a little bit, and it's easy to do because one thing leads to another, okay? Uh, Revelation 12, 7 says, There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. You, you know that the devils have had that uh, freedom to go to and fro, just like in the book of Job. Uh, Job, that starts out with Satan having a conversation with the Lord God. And he's coming to and fro in the earth, okay? But in Revelation 12, there is a war where they are cast out of the heavens. They are no longer, uh, when this happens, they are going to be confined to the earth. Because I can look here in verse 12, Revelation 12, 12. Mm -hmm. It says, therefore rejoice you heavens, heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he hath but a short time. So during the time of great tribulation, the devil and his angels will lose that freedom to oh, this go. this have to be. That's this, right. Okay. But there is also a shadowing of what happened in heaven. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I want you to realize this also, that tree of knowledge of good and evil. See, Satan, he was formed in a perfect, just like everything God did, was good and perfect until iniquity was found in him, right? Mm -hmm. And he was cast out. It's I kind of like the tree of, there was an actual tree with some fruit. <coughs> But there's like, when the devil come talking to her, it's like your mom or dad are warning you, don't do this or don't go there, don't, you know, don't do this. And, but one day when you rebel, somebody's got a friend and peer pressure and you go do. And, and all of a sudden, what you're starting to do becomes something you want to do. That you didn't even know you wanted to do before. It like opens up a whole new thing to you. Exactly. If you just stay away from it to begin with, it's like he was there. If they'd have just resisted, they probably wouldn't have ever known sin. Right. Right. I mean, I, I know we can't, but that's kind of the way it is. There was a tree and it represented the man's will. You cannot eat of this. And right. It was there. You could be enticed, but right. the minute you ate, then you wanted more. It, it we think up a about whole these things. Pandora's box, what they would say. Yes, yes. And you know, when the Lord said, You shall surely die, how did they know what death was? Right. You see, we take these things by faith. I believe that there is a heaven, and I believe that there's a hell. I've made up my mind. I I don't have to see hell to believe it. Right. I don't I have know to see it. heaven to believe it. Right. Right. But they, at the point in the garden, did not know what death was. Right. They didn't know any evil. They didn't know any curse. Right. But they did once they partook. Mm -hmm. Then they too 
took on the knowledge of good and evil. They could say, oh man, remember how good we had it in the garden? Mm -hmm. And now we can't, we've got to go work. And, and that spirit that what died was, they didn't just drop dead. Their spirits died. They were spiritually severed. They were full of communion with the God night and day in that garden. Right. They just communed. And they were full of holiness and God's spirit. And, glory. and the minute they disobeyed and partook of that fruit, that spiritual death began. He, he re... What's that word? Drove withdrew, back from them. Right. Withdrew. Withdrew his, his spirit in them. And all they was, all of a sudden, all they knew was carnal stuff, you know. And evil became really real and very enticing and very hard to resist anymore. I mean, they didn't have no Holy Spirit to even resist with anymore. But they did remember the goodness of God. They did remember the times in the garden. And I think that's right. why they passed it on to Adam and Eve. They, you know, or Cain and Abel and all that's why right. they made sacrifices and stuff because they knew there was and evidently they had an altar because they had saw that when God offered sin or offered the animals and shed blood that that's what atoned for them there so evidently they connected that building an altar and shedding blood made atonement right and they did know that God was real and he what they had and they carried that on, but they was now in a carnal state. Right. You you see, the, when we read through Genesis three, and um, Eve actually tells has this conversation with the the serpent, and and she knows uh, that they're not supposed to partake. He said to the woman, "Yea." Hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now he's telling her, you're, you're supposed to eat of every tree. And the woman said to the servant, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Okay, she's aware that there's a commandment. And the serpent said unto her, you shall surely you shall not surely die. Now he's he's telling her a lie. Mm -hmm. He is a liar. Yes, he's the father of lies. That's in John chapter 8 in the Gospels. Okay, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Okay, basically, he's making it sound good to her. Right. And yet he is in a fallen state and wants her to be in a fallen state also. It's like oh, when you're young and young and dumb and like <laughs> going back to my scenario. Young and dumb. <laughs> Come on and go with me here. Your mom just, she just don't want you to have fun. It, it's harmless. Just come and have a little fun. Right. That's kind of what he said to him now. Right. And then in verse no 6, you're right. Because she says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food... And that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired. You see, you they have a friend listening. that says, come on, let's go. Yeah. Go with me. We're going to have some fun. Or to make one wise, she took of the fruit of the tree thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Okay. Both of them are eating of this fruit now. Right? Okay. And then... The next verse. She might have been the first one to take a bite, but I think he was there hearing the, he was being beguiled too. Well, he was there with her. Yes. So. It, and he was just, he went right with her, but she might have took the first bite, but he was enticed too. The Bible says he, that she was deceived. That yeah. She was that deceived. He was the one that. That's yeah. right. It, you know, in the New Testament, we can clearly see that the sin falls on the man. Mm -hmm. Now, sin entered the world by the man. He entered it by the Eve. That's right. In fact, God promised her seed to be the serpent seed. Mm -hmm. the tree of the you know, in seed. verse 15, like Brother Lee said, Christ was born of three seeds the seed of the woman seed of Abraham, 
same job. I really think that in verse 15, uh, when it says the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it, that dressing and keeping was to keep that enemy out of there. Mm -hmm. And um, that didn't happen. Right. And the thing is, is when Adam disobeyed, then he gave his dominion over unto the serpent mm -hmm. or the devil, Satan, right? Yes. Okay. Well, when we were covering this um, a couple of weeks ago, I covered Isaiah 14 because that particularly talks about Lucifer as he fell. Where? Uh, Isaiah 14. I, I know that sometimes people don't really think about those things. But at verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And then it says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that did, that made the earth to tremble and that did shake kingdoms? I'll, I'll just stop right there. Um, all those I will, I will, I will is like a sign of pride and his iniquity was is that he was foreseeing I mean he was like where he was at in Revelation 12 he was planning on you said they had three reign to go back and forth now this was before the fall right or is it, it? It has been in going on since the since fall. The, since the fall, they have yeah. had access. Principality of powers of the air. They they go to and fro. They are not restrained. But in Revelation twelve, that power that they have in the air will cease, and then they will con be confined to the earth, as you and I are confined to the earth. Now, I know that they have astronauts and spaceships and all those things, man-made power, but we do not have the power to go. Well, that's the, that's the heavens. That's our universe. I mean, that's the heavens. God's place is where Paul went. I mean, there's a third heaven somewhere. Right. You know, even right. above these stars and these suns. That's what he's a saying. Spiritual I'm going to go, side. Yeah, yes. I'm going to go above these clouds and away up there. I'm going to be where I'll be even above God. Right. He's planning a big hold down revolution the whole right. time. That's right. Okay. So you can see, clearly see that his fall is there, right? Mm -hmm. He had this desire and he sinned at that point. When I brought out Ezekiel 31, because that's where it talks about the trees. Ezekiel 31. Numerous times, and I'll, I'll pass, point out to you, in verses 8, it says, The cedars in the garden of God, I see the garden of God, and uh, also in a little bit farther down in that same verse, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. Okay? Mm -hmm. And verse 9, it says, I made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the, in the garden of God envied him. Look, could I just say that he is just much bigger and more um, beautiful than any of the other trees? Mm hmm in fact, in verse 10, it says, His heart is lifted up in his height. Um, 
a little bit farther down in that Ezekiel 31 in verse 16, it says, I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit and all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. So, and then in verse 18, it says, To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shall thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Do you see that? And, and I told you when we're studying this, I see that this is directed at Pharaoh, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it says that in verse 2, it says, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and, he, and to his multitude. But it also ends that chapter in verse 18. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. So I want you to realize this also, that Pharaoh and Egypt, Egypt is a type and shadow of the world. Yes. Yeah, and Pharaoh true. is a type and shadow of the devil. Okay. Yes, for sure. Yeah. He really okay, is. so number nine, mm -hmm. God was talking about Satan. Yes. He put, he planted all these trees, and then this one that was even better and all that, that all everybody else was envious. I thought it was talking about God, but it's talking about Satan. That's right. And he lifted up himself in his own he, height. He became prideful. Yeah. Very prideful. Pride is the cause of his fall, in my thoughts. Yep. Yeah, that's what Pharaoh and, and Egypt represent sin and Satan. And that's what our, the Passover represents an exit. The blood represents an exit from <coughs> Egypt or sin away from the devil. Right. If they just, had to go through the waters yes, yes. to stop Pharaoh. <laughs> right. Pharaoh, all his armies and his mm -hmm. chariots were overthrown. The horsemen were all thrown into or died in, in the Red Sea. And that is really a, a shadow, shadowing of the final demise of Satan when he goes into the lake of fire. And that, that will come, but just not yet. There's other things that need to be accomplished first. Well, how, how did that, uh, did that answer your question and how, um, yes, I just never, yeah. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, he started out good mm -hmm. until iniquity was found in him. Yeah. And then he became good and evil. He knew good until the evilness yeah. came. Okay. Are, are we ready to go on back into Revelation 22? I'm ready to go with you. The okay, I just want to make sure there were no more questions about uh, the trees. No, okay. I, I, I am learning. I am learning some stuff. I didn't. I kind of knew all this stuff when you fit it together for me. I kind of figured it, but I didn't really know about these things. We're learning. Okay. I don't know what the time was here. Are we at yeah. a...